Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Nathan Silas and today we have a very interesting video to react to. And this one says that a Muslim, of course, questioning the nature of Christ. That's the nature of um, Jesus Christ. And then therefore, a brother will be responding to his um, question. But so guys, before we get on to the video, I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's religion. This is basically for educational purposes and I believe that at the end of this video, we all are going to learn from this. So guys, without any further ado, let's get on to this video and check this out. Assalamu alaikum. Wa uh, alaikum uh, salam. So my, uh, uh, so being a Muslim, as you can uh, already mentioned, uh, my main problem is uh, with the Christian doctrine of Godhood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So my, my uh, there's a couple of questions that are related. Uh, first of all, I find uh, this concept uh, logically fallacious. Uh, like there are many aspects to its logical fallacy as in maybe uh, uh, one of them could be that how can God be finite and then infinite at the same time? Like this is like it's like saying that there could exist a square circle. It's, it's a logical fallacy, right? So uh, uh, when we say that Jesus was God or Son of God, uh, we are actually saying that God existed in finitude during the life of Jesus. And he also is infinite at the same time. This is uh, logically fallacious. Now, b because you are uh, like you're coming from a historical standpoint. Did you want me to respond to that? Or are you uh, uh, it's a related, um, uh, uh, like it's the same question continuing. So because you're coming at it from a historical standpoint, um, another thing that adds, like the historical evidence that adds uh, like that supports this argument is that the concept of Trinity, the word Trinity itself, it doesn't appear as a theological term till near the end of the second century after Jesus. So uh, it was first used by, as trias by Theophilus, the Bishop of Antioch in AD 180. So uh, we can, uh, and like adding up to that, when you refer to Mark chapter 14, verse 62, which is uh, what you say is the proof that Jesus claimed to be God. Um, are you really applying the same criteria of objectivity that you were applying previously to the Quran when uh, interpreting this as meaning that Jesus is claiming himself to be God? Because if you like look at it completely objectively, uh, looking at the entire text, like there is nothing in the entire text that say, that's saying that Jesus claimed to be God. And in fact, the verse that you yourself quote is actually saying son of man. So, I mean, I, I, think, I think you get to, uh, um, yeah. Don't go anywhere. What's your name? Uh, Munzer. Munzer, where Munzer. are you from? Uh, I'm from Pakistan. Pakistan. Both khushi hui aap se I had the exact same questions when I was, uh, when, I, when I practiced Islam. What I want to point out is that first and foremost, what we have to see is what Jesus claimed for himself. Now, the secondary stuff that follows, the theological unfolding or unpacking of what he said, we can spend years and years debating what it means. But what did he say about himself? That's the first thing we want to look at. So again, that's a historical perspective. Theologians argue all day long, back and forth, back and forth. You know, theologians argue all the time. And I just sit back and watch and smile, because you can't really prove it one way or another. But when it comes to historical events, we can show with relative degrees of certainty, if the evidence is good, if the records are good, what the most likely conclusion is. So first, and um, let me give you an answer before, if you feel like interjecting, we can talk afterwards. First, I want to point out you are absolutely right. The term Trinity is not used till the end of the second century. What is the doctrine of God called in the Quran? In Islam, what is the doctrine of God called? Uh, Tawheed. Tawheed. Is that in the Quran? Uh, I mean, no, the word Tawheed. The word Tawheed the, is a derived word from Ahad. Alhamdulillah, yes. good. So you understand the word Tawheed is not itself in the Quran. In the same way, the word Trinity is not itself in the Bible. This doesn't pose a problem. The Shahada is not found in the Quran. You have the components of the Shahada in the Quran, but uh, you do not, hold on, you do not have La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah in that way found in the Quran. The component, uh, hold on, the components are found in the Quran. With the Trinity, the components are found in the Bible. So, uh, the word Tawheed does appear in the Hadith. Oh, that's great, Which but it's not in the Quran. Narrations of the prophet. And the, and the Hadith is much later. So we're looking at the, you asked for the Bible, and we have within the early canonical tradition, people calling a God a trinity in the early canonical tradition. In fact, much closer to Jesus' time, 
than the hadith were to Muhammad's time. So it, whichever way you stack it, when you're consistent, you end up with a stronger case for the Trinity, for Jesus' deity. Now I want to continue on to your next part of your question, which is, is Jesus finite or infinite? The argument is that Jesus is, you know, actually I'm going to pose it in a slightly different way. Can Allah come onto this world if he wants? Can he be in this world if he wants? Uh, I, I wouldn't think so. You wouldn't because, think so. So, you, so Allah's omnipotence is limited. He can't come onto this world. It's, it's like, basically, you, Allah, Allah cannot do a logically fallacious thing. Like he cannot create a square circle, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's something logically but fallacious. But how do we so know that's what this is? That Allah, Allah but, how, but how do we know that's what this is? Because, for example, in Surah Al-Imran, when Allah is talking to Moses, it says in Surah Al-Imran, I think it's Surah Al-Imran, it might be Surah 18, but double check. Um, that Allah, as he spoke to Moses, Allah was in the bush. Allah was in the bush. So if you want to say that meant something else, well, you're going to have to argue with the Quran on that one. It seems to be pretty clear that Allah can emanate his voice from a physical place. He can be in a physical place in a sense. In the same way, we don't believe, I don't believe that God coming to this earth limits his omnipotence. It's not a limitation of his omnipotence. Jesus has taken on flesh. God the Father is still everywhere. God, Jesus, the Son, is here on this earth. It's a limitation in that sense, but it's not a limitation of his nature. He is both the divine and human nature. That's the argument. Now, I want to uh, talk about briefly, and then we're going to have to go to the next question, but let's talk afterwards for sure. You asked about the Son of Man. You said he's not calling himself the Son of God. He's calling himself the Son of Man. I'm emphasizing to you, my friend, when this hit me, again, while I was practicing Islam, when this hit me, it hit me like a bolt of lightning. The claim son of God, according to Jews at that time, was not anything divine. Adam was called the son of God. Solomon was called the son of God. In the Psalms, it says, you are gods. It's not a divine claim to call someone a son of God. But when someone refers to that son of man coming on the clouds of heaven, who's going to receive glory, authority, and sovereign power, and people of every nation and language are going to worship him with the worship due only to God, that son of man is more than just a human. He is divine. He's going to be worshipped by all people of all time. So when Jesus calls himself the Son of Man, he's not, it's not the Son of God title. And lots of Christians get this wrong, so I'm not, I'm not pointing the finger at you. Lots of Christians say, oh, Son of Man means he's human, and Son of God means he's God. No, it's the other way around. In the Jewish context, Son of God was a normal human title. Son of Man, from Daniel 7, that was something divine. Go back and read Daniel chapter 7. See that this man is worshipped by all people from all eternity. This man or one who looks like a human anyway, is worshipped by all people alongside of God the Father. That's the one Jesus is claiming to be. Definitely understand that point that I'm trying to make. And so when you see that Jesus' claim is found there in Mark 14, 62, it's found in all the Gospels. And every time Jesus uses the term Son of Man, he's alluding to that. You cannot extract that from the Gospels. So please put Mark 14, 62 next to Daniel chapter 7 and see what Jesus is claiming for himself. And we'll talk afterwards for the rest. Lord bless you, my friend. Take one last question. Wow. I think uh, this is actually a perfect explanation of the uh, nature of um, Jesus Christ. Just like he rightly says, sometimes probably you could look at some of these things and then you won't be able to prove it. Okay, just like how he was making reference with Matthew chapter 40 when Jesus was asking Peter and then the rest of the disciples of who they think he was. Now, talking about in a sense the Trinity, the Tawhid, and all those things, of course, since in a sense, of course, um, I have actually gone through make little um, research concerning um, John chapter 5 from verse um, 7 that was talking about the Father, the Son, the Son of the Holy Ghost bearing witness in, a stand in heaven and making references to the um, epistle of um, John. Now also looking at in a sense, Matthew in a sense, 14 and then the rest of it, okay? You may not actually in a sense, prove it, neither did Jesus directly in a sense, say it that he is the Son of God, but he can only say the Son of Man, just like how he was talking about the book of um, Daniel, the book of Mark, and all those things. He was not saying Son of God, but rather Son of Man, even though there is different in a sense, interpretation to some of these things. But then when you look at it in a stand, 
that's uh, i'm making reference to um matthew 28 if you look at 28 27 and all that the disciples were there and then they saw jesus christ and then what happened to them they says that when they saw him some of them understand worship him what do you think in a sense they worship him as did they worship him as god or they worship him as a ghost or they worship him as a word what exactly do you think in a sense they worship him as and what was jesus word why didn't he says that do not worship him that i am god but what did he say he said power is given unto me look at from verse 17. what did he say power is given unto me both in heaven and on earth and that's why he charged them that they should go and then disciple to all nations that should go and preach to the whole nation we can make references to some of these things jesus christ was also in a son on their boat the disciples were on a boat right and then the bible make us understand that word that they worship him do you think that they worship him as a word exactly? They worship him as a friend. Or they worship him as what? You see. He may not say it in a sense directly, but then there are historical in a sense events that happen that prove that Jesus Christ was truly God. Just like how he asked him. Where do we think in a sense creation take place? Where do we think that God actually in a sense? Of course, we all know that everything happened in Eden, right? So where is the Eden? Where is the Garden of Eden? You see? And then, what happened to the judgment that God gives to Adam and Eve? Of course, I know that, of course, the Muslim may not believe in a sense in the judgment. Because if they believe in it, who shows that, of course, God actually come on it? And since they do not agree that he comes on the earth, it automatically means that you are limiting God's power. That God cannot be everywhere. And that's why he was asking him, you what do you think happened to the burning fire when God called Moses? What do you think happened? And what do you think, in a sense, happened when the commandment was given to Moses in the mountain? What do you think happened to Moses when he fell on his face and he was able to? Where do you think all those things, in a sense, happened? I believe that some of those things, in a sense, are also in the Quran. What do you think, in a sense, happened? You see? When you look at some of these historical event it shows that jesus christ was truly good but then i know that a lot of you have told an opinion concerning this i wanted to drop it at the comment section let's all deliberate on this so this is the end of my video if you like my reaction if you like share and subscribe if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys you remain blessed and i see you in my next video bye bye